All right. Welcome, everyone, to our next webinar. Guests are rolling in slowly, so we're going to give a few seconds till our guests all get in. We have over 250 people attending tonight, so that's a little bit of a large number, which is super awesome that you guys are all attending tonight. Um, while we wait for everyone to stream in, we hope everyone's doing well and you're having a great summer so far. Maybe you're doing some fun things. Maybe you came to orientation already. Maybe we're going to see you soon for orientation, I hope. Weather's getting a little warm, so when you come out, just make sure you're prepared. Bring your, your sunscreen. Temperatures aren't that bad, but it is a little toasty. So we'll wait a couple seconds as we watch the numbers climb. In the meantime, while we're waiting, just make sure you're watching on our admitted.ucmerced.edu website for those important uh, next steps that are coming up and upcoming webinars as well. We'll give it a couple more minutes before we actually kick off our presentation tonight. We have some cool things on campus for you to see when you come out for orientation if you haven't already been out. We have some new art installations you can take super cool selfies at. We have a UCM. Um, check your July e-newsletter. It's in your email box. Everybody got emailed a copy, including our parents. You can take a look at some of those art installations of places you can take cool selfies and tag UC Merced. Share those out so we can reshare them and feature you, feature you on our social media. You can become an uh, internet star. All right, so looks like numbers are slowing down a little bit. So we will go ahead and kick this off because we have a lot of good information to give to you all. So hello, your normal host for tonight is not with us. Ricky Hill is on special assignment tonight, so she's not with us. So I am there, her interim, your, your interim host for tonight. My name is Amy Lozano Smith. I'm the Director of Marketing Communications for Enrollment Management. Some of you have may have met me on our reception tours this past spring. And if I didn't meet you then, I hope to see you on campus this fall. If you do see me, reach out and say hello. If you want to be one of our spokespersons, be featured in a testimonial and some of our marketing pieces, just let me know as you learn to grow and love UC Merced as all of our students do. We're always looking for great representatives of our campus that we can showcase and feature and help tell the story of why UC Merced is so awesome. All right, so tonight you're joining us for a webinar on uh, UShip, which is UC Student Health Insurance Plan, vaccinations and requirements, um, how waivers and all that kind of more technical stuff. Definitely not my wheelhouse. Uh, we have a great uh, series of hosts that are going to talk about these specific areas, answer your questions. So we encourage you to hold your questions till the end of the presentation because there's more likely the chance we're actually going to cover the questions you have about some of these aspects. And maybe you can gain that information before the presentation is over and answer those questions at the very end if we do not cover them. So without further ado, we hope you're having a great summer. As I mentioned earlier, if you haven't already attended orientation and you're coming up, we are excited to see you on campus. Uh, I was just mentioning it's a little toasty here right now. We had great weather in June. We were very spoiled, but right now it's a little warm. So come prepared with shorts and sunscreen, but we have a lot of amenities on campus that'll keep you cool. Um, and we're so excited to welcome you to campus. We can't wait to meet you in person. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to my lovely colleague, Crystal, and she's going to walk you through all the things you need to know. And I'm going to go ahead and hide. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Crystal Reed. I am the insurance admin supervisor for UC Merced, and I'm the supervisor for UC SHIP and waivers. So uh, just to give everybody a little bit of a rundown, we are open uh, Monday through Friday. And Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we are open 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Tuesdays, we are open 9.30 to 4.30 we are located on the second floor in the Gallo building, which is the orange building uh, right next to the gym. And if anyone after uh, today's webinar have any questions, our telephone number is 209-228-4876, option number one. Um, I recommend if you are um, trying to get a hold of us, please leave a voicemail and um, with your name, your student ID, 
and uh, your telephone number and a detailed message. It does take us about 24 to 72 hours to get back to anyone due to the volume of calls we're getting. So, you know, just to let everybody know, we, um, my department, we're a team of three and we service um, over 92, uh, 9,200 students plus. Uh, you can also get a hold of us through insurance, our email, which is insurance at ucmerced.edu. So just to give you a little uh, rundown of our waiver uh, for UC Merced, um, the criteria, which is a 55 mile radius for your primary care provider, the PCP requirement. And this is for the fall of 2023. So you will have to have a primary care provider within 55 miles of campus, whether it be an HMO plan, PPO plan, or Medi-Cal. Uh, it's a requirement and that's all across the board. So that all across the board means um, from UC San Francisco to UC San Diego, we all have the same requirement. Um, after your waiver is submitted, students will immediately receive an email with pending audit status. So as soon as you hit that submit button, you will immediately receive a pending audit status email. And that is your proof that you submitted it. So if you don't get a, an email with pending audit status, that means that your waiver was not submitted. After you've submitted your waiver, uh, please allow five to seven business days for final approval or denial. Uh, all waivers are 100% audited. They are not audited by our department, they actually go through AHP, Academic Health Plans, and they are our third party vendor who are in charge of that. So again, please allow five to seven business days for you to receive an approval or denial. If your waiver is denied for any reason, you have seven days to appeal the denial, which means you can reach out to us by phone, by email. If you're on campus, you can come visit us and we can help you. Uh, Try, we can help you to try to get your waiver approved. Our goal is to try to, uh, is to help students get their waiver approved. We don't want students on our insurance if they already have it, uh, but we do have to follow the mandatory policy. The waiver deadline is August 1st at 11.59 p.m. So as of August 2nd, 12 a.m., the waiver is closed and no longer available. And this is a hard deadline. There are no extensions given. So please, everyone, submit your waivers before or on August 1st. Um, like I said before, as of August 2nd at 12 a.m., that link is disabled and you will no longer have access. And again, if you have any questions, please email us or give us a call. Uh, we are here to help you in any way we can. Okay, so uh, this is a brief overview on how to waive out with Medi-Cal. Um, we ask all students to upload the front and back of their Medi-Cal state card. And I have an example here on the slide, as you can see. So it's either the blue and white card with the state seal or the card with the um, state flower, which is the poppies. All Medi-Cal students do not need to upload a summary of benefits. Reason being, it's a giant booklet. So we do not expect any of the Medi-Cal students to scan every single page and upload it. So if you have Medi-Cal, there is no need to submit a sum uh, summary of benefits. Um, the Medi-Cal counties that are accepted for the waiver are Fresno, San Joaquin, and Mariposa County. Please keep in mind that um, we do, although we do accept those, um, you know, for approval, your provider, your prim primary care provider must be within 55 miles of campus. So if you have Medi-Cal through Fresno County and your provider is 58 miles away from campus, unfortunately, we cannot accept that. You'll have to find a provider within that 55 mile range, as well as we also accept Stanislaus, Merced, and Madera for Medi-Cal. Any other um, county other than those six listed, unfortunately, we do not accept and your waiver will not be approved. Um, if you do have other uh, Medi-Cal County, like, uh, for example, let's let's take a, a Fremont County, you uh, have to call your caseworker and update your resident residential address to uh, your dorm address that you will be staying at on campus. Uh, if you don't have one yet, you can use our temporary address, which is 101 
uh, Terra Center, 5400 North Lake Road, Merced, California, 95343. Uh, once you uh, talk to your caseworker, you can get it expedited, and it takes exactly 72 business hours. So if you call on a Friday, it will not appear on a Monday. It would actually appear in Merced County on Wednesday. Otherwise, it does take 30 to 60 days for that change to take into effect. So if you if your Medi-Cal County is not in Merced by August 1st, unfortunately, there is nothing we can do. We, you know, we like I said before, we don't give extensions. We need that Medi-Cal County. If you're outside of the six that I had mentioned, if it's not here by August 1st, unfortunately, you will be put on UC ship. And then any other questions, we actually have a how-to wave out with Medi-Cal with the detailed instructions on the link below. If you are waiving with an HMO plan or PPO, so HMO means, uh, for example, you have a set primary care provider, we will need a front and back of your insurance card, your summary of benefits, which summary of benefits means breakdown of your medical benefits. It gives like a detailed breakdown. And we also need a screenshot of a provider that the student can see within 55 miles of campus. Um, once you have um, those three documents, you can upload them to the waiver and submit it. So now that I've went over the waiver, I'm gonna go over UC SHIP, which is our insurance. And it is a uh, major medical, dental, and vision plan. And it is um, ACA compliant, which is Affordable Care Act compliant. The medical insurance is through Anthem Blue Cross, and that's medical and vision. Uh, your dental insurance is through Delta Dental. And you can download uh, the insurance card uh, through the App Store or Google Play. For your medical and vision cards, you will go through Sydney Health. That's the name of the app. And all you would do is register, which is your name, your date of birth, and your student ID number. And that'll give you your digital medical cards. You'll be able to find a provider anywhere you are um, within the U.S. Uh, Anthem Blue Cross, it's a PPO plan. So wherever they accept Anthem Blue Cross in the U.S., even overseas, if the student decides to study abroad, they are fully covered there as well. And um, any student, registered student, can use the health center. Um, whether you're on UC SHIP or um, your parents' insurance, you can use it for free. We don't charge insurances. We don't charge copays either. Um, a breakdown of your vision insurance. It is, for example, for uh, you know you want to see you want to get new glasses. So it's ten dollars for the vision exam, and you get a hundred and twenty dollar allowance for glasses or contacts, and that's a year. So every year, if you want new glasses, you want to get contacts. Uh, you have a $120 allowance. Anything over $120, the student is responsible for. Uh, through dental, uh, you get two free cleanings a year, one every six months, and you get a $1,000 allowance uh, per year, calendar year. So, um, you know, you, uh, the insurance will pay $1,000, uh, up to $1,000. Anything after, it is the student's responsibility to pay. It does cover cavity fillings, root canals, crowns. Um, if you need um, your wisdom teeth out, it will cover that as well. And you have that $1,000 allowance. For your medical benefits, you get a $15 copay for doctor visits and $20 copay for specialist visits. And um, UC Merced students do not need referrals to be seen by a specialist. So you don't have to go to a primary care provider and you know, have them set a referral to you to see a specialist. You can actually find one through your Sydney Health app. Go ahead and make an appointment. Due to our school being, you know, uh, smaller than than the other schools, um, Anthem Blue Cross has made an exception for our students. So if you need to see a dermatologist, you can just give them a call and set your appointment. And this is, just for everyone to know, in-network provider pricing. So if you find a provider within network, this is what you would have to pay. Now, this is uh, for enrolling dependents. It is more for grad students, but we also want to let um, undergraduate students know as well that you can enroll your dependents into the school's insurance. Um, all dependents must be registered or enrolled um, every semester because our insurance is semester based. So it's uh, fall and spring. Um, so our enrollment periods 
starts uh, one month before the insurance begins. So July 15th, and you have until September 15th to enroll for the fall, as well as for the spring, um, one month before the start date of the spring insurance. So December 15th, all the way to February 15th. After the enrollment period is closed, uh, dependents can only be enrolled for qualifying life events, which is adoption, birth, marriage, or loss of insurance. Now, undergrads, if there are loss of insurance, for example, for some reason or another, um, let's say if a parent loses the insurance, we can enroll our students into a UC ship, and that counts as a life event. And all the enrollment for dependents and or voluntary, um, you know, the uh, rates and dates, uh, the coverage periods can be found on our website, which is below, and it is very user friendly. And um, now I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, give the presentation over to Adriana Llanos, and she is our um, RN at the Health Center. And we see your questions coming in. Our team is doing a great job of answering a lot of them live. And I just want to remind people, um, and I posted it in the chat, but I, I want you to know we're not ignoring um, your questions when we mark them as to be answered live. It's that we think that question could benefit others. And so we think it's important to talk about it live at the end of the Q&A. And so we will get to you, we promise. How's it going, Adriana? It's going good. Thank you for having me. Yeah. If you can't get your camera to work, it's okay. You can talk. Okay, great. Um, so my name is Adriana. I am a registered nurse at the Student Health Services, and I am here to present um, a presentation in regards to the required immunizations and how to upload uh, your immunization record onto your health portal. Okay, so I'm going to go over the required immunizations. Um, this is for new incoming undergrads and grad students. Um, the four vaccines that are required are the following. Um, Tdap, we do require one dose after age seven. Uh, measles, mumps, and rubella, also known as MMR. Uh, two doses are required. The first dose must be on or after your first birthday or you could uh, turn in positive titers, which is a blood test that will show immunity to um, disease. Uh, varicella, same thing as two doses. First dose must be on or after your first birthday uh, or positive titers. Meningococcal conjugate, also known as Menvio, Menactra, or Menquafi. One dose on or after 16th birthday for all students under 22 years of age and also the um, COVID-19 bivalent vaccine. Now with this uh, vaccine, the bivalent, um, the student does have the option to um, complete an exemption if they do not want to, or they haven't received the vaccine. Um, they do not need to upload the COVID-19 vaccine record as long as they enter the date and the type of vaccine they received or complete an exemption. They also need to complete a TB, which is tuberculosis, risk green form. And this is done through the health portal. Uh, we do advise and encourage for students to complete this two weeks prior to the arrival to UC Merced campus. Um, for questions regarding the requirements, um, they can send us a secure message to the immunization nurse via um, the health portal, or they could give us a call at 209-228-2273, option one. Adriana, we're just trying to match the slides up with you since you can't see it. I think you're on slide 12 um, if you have a copy of the PowerPoint. So I'm going to have us catch up real quick to slide 12. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry. I don't have a copy. It's okay. Amy, go forward uh, one more. There we go. Okay, this is the required immunization slide that Adriana just went over. Um, and Adriana, when you're ready, we'll go to the next one, which gets into the demo. Yes, let's how... go ahead and go to the demo. Okay, cool. Next slide. There we go. We're on track. Okay, thank you. And this is um, steps to add and upload your immunization record to your health portal. Um, of course, you would have to log in to the health portal. And by logging in, um, you are going to be entering the information. 
you'll go on to medical clearances, which is where the arrow is highlighting or pointing to. Um, and then next slide. After medical clearances, you're gonna select the vaccine um, that you want to update. Um, for this um, example, I selected the COVID bivalent vaccine. You're gonna click update or uh, also to upload the immunization record, you click the update button. And next slide. On here, you're gonna get this little window pop up and you're gonna enter or select the type of vaccine you received. Um, with the date and then you're going to hit um, done and that should update the day you received the vaccine or it'll ask you to upload your medical record as well. Now if the student wanted to select a, uh, an exemption for the COVID-19 bivalent vaccine or the influenza vaccine, the next slide will show you how to do that and it's going to be under the same page medical clearances. Scroll all the way to the bottom where you see the um, the request and exemption, you would click on there and you would select the vaccine you're requesting the exemption. For this type of exemption, the only vaccines that are going to be exempt is the influenza and the COVID-19 vaccine. So you would select whatever vaccine, uh, one of those two and continue. And then that will make you compliant. For the other vaccines, the only exemption a student can request is the medical exemption, which has to be completed by their primary care provider and then uploaded onto the health portal. Okay, and then uh, since I did skip um, a slide, just to let you know the services that we offer here at the Student Health Service, um, it's like a primary care uh, clinic. So we do manage um, chronic medical conditions such as asthma, diabetes, hypertension, or acute health issues such as strep throat, ear infection, diarrhea. Um, we also do medication management. And like I said, it's a primary care. Um, so we could perform uh, general physical exams, including pap smears, reproductive health, sports physicals, sexual health, HIV prep, gender affirming care. We do have um, our in-house lab testing, which usually includes glucose checks, hemoglobin. We do test for mono, influenza, strep throat, um, urinalysis, and of course, COVID-19 testing. Um, we also uh, provide or perform minor, minor procedures such as laceration repairs, sutures or removals skin tag removal, splints, IUD removals, um, ingrown toenail removals, and we also provide referrals to specialists, specialists depending on plan of care. And I think that covers all my presentation, um, but I'll, I'll be here too in case um, anybody has questions. Amy, any other parting words? No, you did a great job. Thanks for coming in. Um, um, as you mentioned, we will repost this webinar and we will edit it down so it's nice and cohesive as we go through it and fix all the little screens we had flying around tonight. It's a wild and wooly summer because we're so excited that you're coming and we're looking out the windows. We see all of you guys at, um, coming to campus for orientation. It makes us so happy. We're so excited to welcome you to campus and um, again, Go to the uh, admitted.ucmerced.edu uh, website to find out about upcoming webinars on, on, like Lisa mentioned, the housing, job opportunities. We'd love to have you. My department hires media cat. We call them the media cats. It's a creative studio of photographers, videographers, social media experts. So if you're interested, we will be recruiting. Uh, we have a three graduates, I think, this year. We're losing some really amazing talent. So we'll be looking for new talent to join our amazing team and working with Lisa and all these awesome people on this panel tonight. So we hope you're excited as we are. As you can tell, we're really excited. Um, and with that, we will bid you adieu. Have a wonderful evening. And we look forward to seeing all of you at our next session or on campus this coming few weeks. Have a great thank night. You. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. Bye. Absolutely. Bye. <laughs>